Today we're going to be answering the most common questions we get when we tell people we quit our jobs to go on a year-long RV trip. We're going to be answering questions like what inspired the trip, what we're doing about gas prices, how we afforded to take a trip like this, and many more. If you're interested in seeing a specific question and answer, we're going to put the timestamps down below. But right now we're going to go back to one of our favorite mornings that we've had thus far on the trip as we begin to answer some of these questions. Yesterday we drove a few hours from South Wyoming to North Wyoming. It was the most beautiful drive, one of the most beautiful drives I've ever been on in my entire life. The scenery was stunning. We got here late last night. We stumbled upon this campsite that was first come first serve and we happened to be super lucky and get a spot right on the water. Is this real? <laughs> are we sleeping here tonight? I don't know, are we? This doesn't seem real at all. Like there's gotta be something wrong that we're about to find out tonight. Like this is a horror story or something. This is only $15. What? <laughs> and today we're going to be answering some common questions we've been getting about quitting our jobs and starting a year long RV trip. But this morning when we woke up, we saw how beautiful and crystal clear this water is. So we need to get in. But first we need to go change. Let's go. All right, it is time to take a morning dip. There is one problem. We have not at all checked the temperature of this water. Oh We're about to find out. <laughs> it's so cold. Oh my gosh. I'm not used to temperatures like this. <laughs> Florida beaches feel like bath water, just so you know. <laughs> it's reaching certain parts of my body. It is insane that we only paid 50 dollars for this campsite that is our rv right there now it is dry camping so we have no hookups of any kind but we felt like this was worth it okay so we're gonna answer some questions while we jump in the water this is gonna be fun okay. <laughs> oh gosh I'm all right three two one <gasps> <laughs> All right, one of the questions we always get okay. is what inspired the trip? Okay, what inspired the trip is two years ago, we went out west, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, which we're in Wyoming right now. We fell in love with national parks. We went to Grand Teton, Zion National Park, and Yellowstone. And Yellowstone. And it just, it just, ugh, it just sparked this passion about getting outside, being in nature, enjoying God's creation, and really just exploring it for all that it's worth. You can do it. Feels good. It feels good. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Three, two. Oh my gosh. You I can can't. do it, babe. I if I did it, you can do it. Can you believe I did it? No. This is crazy <laughs> cold. <laughs> it might not be for northerners, but for us southerners, this is very cold. All right, ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Oh my. Okay, God. now what's your answer for what inspired this trip? <gasps> okay, so like Chris said, we got inspired by going to some national parks and it really just moved us in a way that we realized we needed to spend some time in this season of our life while we could and we wanted to take some time to just travel more, experience more. There's just so much that we want to see. So that's why we decided to make this trip happen and um this is it. This is why we wanted to make this trip happen, right? I mean, look where we are right now. That right here is our RV. And this is our front yard. This is our front yard right now. But this, this right here is why we decided to make this trip happen right here. Oh man. High five. I mean, honestly, better than coffee. I don't like coffee, but. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> don't know if I agree with that. So 
The second most common question we've been getting is where are you going? What's your itinerary? And the truth is we don't have too much of that planned. If you saw our last video, you know that we told you we're going to Canada, we're doing Banff National Park, and then we're heading down to Montana for Glacier National Park, and then Wyoming for Yellowstone, Grand Teton, and after that, we don't really know. But that's the beauty of RV life. You just kind of pick up and go where you want. If you want to stay somewhere longer, you stay, and if you want to go, you go. So we'll keep you guys updated as we plan our itinerary, but for now, that's all we got planned. Right now it's time to dry off, get packed up and hit the road. Then we will be answering our third and by far the most common asked question we get, which is how could you possibly afford quitting your job and going on an RV trip for an entire year? As you can tell, it's been a few days. George's beard is shorter. I'm not as ghostly white. I did a little bit of self tanner. Now, we are going to be talking about the most asked question that we get, which is how are you affording to do this trip? Now, we want to preface this with a couple things. Number one, we are not financial advisors. Let me say that again. We are not financial advisors. All this is going to be is what we did. We are not suggesting you do this. We're not recommending it, encouraging you. This is our story. This is how we made this trip happen. The second thing we want you to know is that because money can be such a big topic, it can be a sensitive topic at times, we just wanted to kind of sit down and have a bit of a conversation about it. Yeah. So this portion of the video is not going to be like other portions of our video. There's not going to be some probably really cool music or awesome b-roll. It's just going to be us talking. To talk. We just want to talk about how we made this happen because so many people are asking. People ask, what are you doing for work? What are you doing for money? We've had a couple of people ask us, did you win the lottery? <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do when you get back? What are you going to, what are you going to do about the gas prices? People have so many questions yes. that pertain about money. So we're just going to sit down and answer a few of those questions as best as we can right now. Naturally, we're not going to be able to cover it all and say it all right now in one video, but we're going to do our best. And right now we're taking note of all of our expenses, writing down all the stats, everything like that. So in the future, we will have a video where we go over like our exact expenses, maybe like a month monthly budget type of thing. But right now we're only a few weeks in and let's talk about how we prepared. How did to we make, get here? How did we get here? How did we prepare to make this happen? And the truth is there is no secret formula. There's no magic formula. I wish there was. It would be easier that way. It's just good old fashioned saving. That means maybe we didn't always get to get the clothes that we wanted to get. We always we didn't always go out to eat where we wanted to go, get coffee every day. We just chose as a couple to prioritize memories and moments over materials. Mm -hmm. And again, that doesn't mean we're right you're wrong, you're yeah. right, we're wrong. That's just how we chose to prioritize it. Looking back on it, we didn't always realize we were doing this, but now I can see we did three things and maybe these three things might help you. The first thing we did to be able to get to a place that we can do something like this is we set a goal. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you have to start by putting a target on the wall. And to be transparent, we didn't always know that our goal of saving was for this trip. Yeah. We didn't always have this in mind. But at the end of the day, it starts with putting a target on the wall because if not, you're kind of just wandering around aimlessly with mm -hmm. your finances. The second thing we did is set an aggressive budget. Basically, we took a month of our spending, wrote everything that we spent that mm -hmm. entire month, an itemized list, and then we started to go through it and see what was was really needed what was not needed what was a want more you know what was a want versus what was a need and then as we started getting better with our budget we started to realize hey we do have some margin here with what we're making yeah and what we're really needing and the rest of that money that margin we're going to immediately to put it aside to save and we weren't always perfect with our budget there's times where we've splurged of course we're only human but by saving that money 
for years. That is how we're able to do this trip. And don't get it twisted. This is not some infinite fund that we're going to be living lavishly on in our travels. Rather, it is a very finite fund. Yes. So much so that to be very honest, to be very real, we're saying that we're going to be traveling for a year. The real truth of the matter is we're going to be traveling as long as this fund is around. Once that fund starts approaching zero, we... We gotta come back home. We go back <laughs> home and we get back to work. Um, so although, yes, we have been saving for this trip, it is on a very strict budget, which is why we've already had chickens for roommates. <laughs> And by creating that intentional budget where we looked at what we were bringing in and what we were spending and made sure there was margin there, there was yeah. room for saving. That brought us to the third step, which was saving aggressively. Everything in that margin. This is what we made. This is what we lived off of. All of that money was accounted for and immediately moved into savings. So much so that any money that came in over our income, I'm talking gifts. Grandma gave us $20, a gift card. Even you as a hairstylist, you would get cash tips. Mm -hmm. That was always above your normal income. So we would immediately put that aside and that also helped jumpstart our savings. So that's the truth of how we got to a place that we could do I something like this. I wish it was like some quick fix answer but we just saved our money. And it's been years of us saving. It's been years of us saying no to things. Yes. Um, it hasn't always been fun. There's no. been clothes I've wanted to get. There's been times we wanted to go out to eat and we said no. There's been fights we've had. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes, 100%. Because anytime you bring up finances, it can definitely cause tension. So we had to learn very early on in our marriage and even to this day how to handle those conversations. But the truth of the matter is it was just saving our money. That's how we did it. No, we did not win the lottery. I wish we had. So now you know what inspired the trip, where we're planning on going, and how we afforded it. And now it's time for rapid fire questions. Where are you most excited to go? Well, where I was most excited to go before yesterday was Banff National Park. Yesterday was our first day. It was absolutely the most beautiful beautiful place I've ever been in and there is a video coming soon and I'm so excited for it. Where are you most excited to go? I'm most excited to go to Glacier National Park in Montana though I will say I don't know how in the world we're going to beat Banff. <laughs> It feels like we started like off strong. We started off too strong. I feel like we peaked out and now we can just pack up and go home. The reason we started in Canada first was obviously it's the most north. So as it gets colder, we want to keep going south. Exactly. Weather. Okay. Weather is what took number us north. Number two, number two. Question number two is there a food that you are excited to try while on the road? I'm always excited to try food, let's be real. But I'm really excited to go back to this one coffee shop in Wyoming. It's called Persephone. It's my favorite and I just can't wait to go back. What about you? I'm most excited to go back to Jack. Well, mine's in Jackson too. <laughs> I'm most excited to go back to Jackson and have a huckleberry shake. Yes. So good. Jackson boy. is known for huckleberry flavored things and if you've never so had good. huckleberry, it will change your it's life. Like a blueberry and a blackberry had a baby. And I'm a chocolate guy. True. But huckleberry. All right, number three, so rapid good. fire. Number three. This is a good one. We'll number three. At the same time. One, two, three. Are, Are you, you going, going to annoy, annoy each, each other? other? Yes. yes, absolutely. We're going to annoy each other. We were talking about this on our drive into Canada, but basically when we were living at home, working full-time jobs together, let's say we had to make 10 decisions a day. Hey, what are we going to eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner? Are we going to go to, um, are we going to hang out with our friends today? What are we going to watch on TV today? The amount of questions that we need to answer every single day has compounded by a multiple of what <laughs> I, I, I don't even know. We have to answer so many questions. What are we going to do about our water? What are we going to do with our poop and Where our pee and our sewage? Where are we going to sleep tonight? Where are we going to, is there a safe place to sleep there's tonight? There's just so many more decisions we have to make. So naturally, when there's so many decisions to be made, you're going to kind of annoy each other. So you know we're going to annoy each other. And now what are we going to do to help that situation? I think at the end of the day, we're just going to have to continue to learn how to communicate more clearly, mm -hmm. more um, levelly, more level-headed. Yes. More, um, you know, cause sometimes you can start firing back, you know, and um, you can get a little sassy. You can get a little sassy, a little spicy when you need to be a little sweetie. But yeah, just have patience with each other and recognize that we are on the same team and we have the same goal in mind. Absolutely. Question number four, are we really going to be gone for a year? Our goal is a year. It might be a little less. It might be a year. It might be a little more if we can really find a way to stretch our money. We'll <laughs> Figure see. It out. But yes, the goal is a year. Okay. Question number five. Question number five is what are we doing about gas? Oof, those gas prices. They, when we first planned this trip, they were not what they are today. So they be hurting. So what we're going to do about that is, is probably just stay in places longer than we might have, which is totally fine. But that way we're not driving every single day. The other thing that we're doing is we're shopping for gas like so many of you. Oh, yes. We're using gas, the Gas Buddy app and we're using Upside to try and save where we can, when we can. Back. And last one, what has been your high and your low so far? My high of the trip so far has been Banff National Park. We've already mentioned it. 
I we're big fans. We're big fans. We're very big fans. That place was insane. My low of the trip so far has been we we locked ourselves out of the RV. <laughs> that could have been really, really bad. Thankfully, my sister was with us. We sent her through the window for her to open the RV from the inside. That was a low. Getting gas always stinks because of the prices and also fitting a 28 foot trailer into a gas station. It's just, it can be nerve wracking with all these people flying around and stuff like that. Well, my high was the same as his. Banff is just, it's stolen my heart. It makes me emotional just to even like think about what we saw there. Walking out onto Lake Louise for the first time literally took my breath away and I'm so excited for that video. Mm. Um, a low for me is, gosh, it's pretty hard to think of a low, which I guess is a good sign. We had a hot night in a golf course parking lot. We did, and there was a thunderstorm that was pretty scary. But oh yeah. Other than that, I just, I guess just missing family and friends, but so far so good. If you have other questions, be sure to drop them down below. We're gonna be answering other questions along the way. We really appreciate your support. You subscribing to our channel, liking and commenting. We love you. We'll see you next time in Banff. Later. Bye.